Hello everybody and welcome to another art lecture stream uh, brought to you by the R Furry Art School Discord the R Furry Art School subreddit Discord there's a whole lot of stuff happening there my name is Iothisk and this uh, we're, today we're going to be talking uh, about design principles elements and k k k k composition if I can talk today uh, and a lot of what I'm doing today is going to be drawing from my experience uh, from uh, composition and design classes uh, when I was in school and also some online resources that I've pulled up uh, and will probably share in the video description when this is uploaded to YouTube. Hi YouTube by the way! Uh, hang out for a little while uh, if you like what I'm doing uh, definitely drop me a like or subscribe or whatnot uh, it is appreciated uh, it does help me out but, uh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, let's, so le let's go ahead and get started. Um, so we're going to hop into the first thing that we, that we need to understand um, is, the, is the design elements. Uh, and there are lots of little design elements, and I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Alright, so the first example of a design element, uh, let's see here. Make sure I'm on the right layer. lines all right so I'm a uh, I'm gonna list them out here so like we'll we'll start with lines shapes oops colors and values Oops, form me. Eh, that's ugly looking. Teaching a design class, it might as well look good, right? Forms. Or you could call it mass. Alright. Uh, I'm gonna add this one here. My notes are a little disorganized, excuse me. Lines and edges, shapes, colors, and values, forms, and mass, texture, perspective, perspective slash depth slash space and these are just some examples of like what can be contained like we're talking about like the literal pieces of uh, of an, a drawing or a, or a painting so we've got um, yeah lines and edges whenever you've got like a line like made with uh, either either a paintbrush uh, uh, or an inking or a, or a pencil uh, or any other tool really. Um, those are those are examples. These are these every single one of these elements can be used uh, in the principles that we will talk about. Um, but yeah, so like lines and edges, they're very important to to give a a literal path for the viewer's uh, eye to run across. Uh, and the lines and the edges can make up uh, shapes. So, we got our simple shapes. Circle, triangle, square, you know, and so forth. Adding more and more sides. Pentagon, hexagon, hexagon. All of that stuff. Colors and values. I'll go ahead and lay down a. Go ahead and lay down a rainbow thing here. Oh. Boom. Ha ha. Clever little rainbow. The forms and masses are indicated by uh, lights and shadows. 
so that could be considered another design elements like anything that you any particular thing that you could point out about a picture you know um any any one particular thing so we're not talking about big collections we're talking about individual segments here so we're talking about you know lines and edges shapes colors values forms mass uh we can talk about light and shadow in that in that uh in that area too and we can also talk about like depth as far as like light and shadow uh, but things also carry over in uh, in perspective and help create a sense of space um, the textures that are assigned this uh, textures would be like um, perhaps mm -hmm. mainly primarily a painting thing but they can be included in digital art as well they'll just be digital textures not actual like off the canvas textures but yeah So with to give something form or mass, we can also talk about light and shadow to repeat. To give a simple, super simple de demonstration of that. We can have a sphere and it has varying levels of light intensity. So perhaps down here is very dark, and up here is not quite so dark. And then things can continue to get lighter and lighter based on where your light source is. And that helps give a thing form rather than just being flat, flat, flat. There we go. All right. All right. Um. So yeah, I think that's a pretty, f a fairly comprehensive idea of like design elements. Anything that can be broken down into individual pieces, those will be those will be called elements. Uh. You know. So a building will be made up of the elements of lines and masses and textures. A character will be made up of the same stuff. So characters and environments and props and whatever else that you're going to include in your drawing. Uh, let's go ahead and move forward. I've done an entire video on perspective before, so um, that was a two-part series. So go ahead and go back and check that out. But yeah, so those are the design elements. Design principles. Okay, so there are a ton, 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 ton of design principles. Again, here I'm going to show you like a, a very brief kind of selection so design principles can refer to patterns dominance emphasis slash focus unity variety harmony balance uh, imbalance and then I can also throw in uh, whoops symmetry and asymmetry contrast movement movement and rhythm
local tone. Equivalence, you know, and I can go on and on and on. Um, perhaps if you've heard of the 80-20 rule, that can be applied to designs as well. Uh, there are others out there. Uh, let me see here. Tons and tons and tons, and I have a couple of like good uh, book recommendations for those too. Um, if I'm going to be talking about uh, principles of design, there's a, there's a book called Universal Principles of Design, um, and it's by uh, a man named William Lidwell uh, and and a team of others, uh, and it's a 200 plus page book all about uh, design principles beyond. Uh, and it, it goes beyond um, visual design, which is what like artists are most interested in. But many of those uh, principles of design that are not necessarily visual can have like a visual counterpart, or uh, or other uh, related principles that are worth learning about. So, and this is just kind of like a smattering of of stuff that you can look into. Uh, I definitely recommend it. But um, so to go back to earlier. We've got our design elements. Each of our elements here, each of the, these are the atoms, so to speak, or the, the, the kind of building blocks. Uh, and then the the way that they come together, can be governed by principles, right? And so, like, if you're thinking about this, like, to use the the chemistry analogy, you can think of it as like, let me pull up a new sheet here to just kind of write this down. So if the I'm going to make like a chemical or a chemical or atomic analogy. So like the atoms are going to be the elements The molecules will be the principles, and then the whole object or substance can be considered composition. Composition. All right. So, yeah. Each of these are smaller parts that come together to form the whole. Making sure that got those put together. So um, our lines and edges come together to create uh, shapes, so to speak. These are, you know, individually considerable because I can have both like dominant a dominant line that goes across the page, and a dominant shape that takes up the page. Um, yeah, so, and, and it's it's kind of, it can get kind of circular because we can talk about the elements of design as compositional tools as well. So, yeah, so we've got uh, our design elements that can help compose our design uh, principles, patterns, uh, colors can be in a pattern, lines can be in a pattern, uh, shapes can be in a pattern, you know, all of those elements that we talk about, like, can be shown in patterns. Uh, the dominance and emphasis and focus, um, those, those can be a matter of, like, size, how big uh, is, is a thing on the page, uh, how dark is it can be uh, an element of, uh, of contrast. Um, contrast can provide uh, dominance, emphasis, and focus. Um, there are more visual ways to, to kind of cover this, so let me go ahead and cover that. So, when we're talking about um, dominance and emphasis and focus, we can have perhaps a small element here, 
on a page and a large element next to it. And let's say for Yee. That was not closed like I thought it was. Okay. Deep, ah. Sorry. All right. Right. So if we're talking about dominance, we've got... Um, I've got several design elements that I can talk about here. I can talk about contrast. Contrast would be the white background, uh, which are contrasted by the dark shapes that are on the page. So that's a contrast of like uh, intensity and values, so to speak. So that's contrast. Uh, if I'm talking about dominance, we can say let this big square takes up most of the page, right? Or at least... Uh, a good amount of the the page compared to this little dot right so like things could be expanded so like yeah if we're talking about um, dominance we can say this this black square dominates the page while this is uh, can be that they, they can uh, they can both have like elements of uh, focus like another um, another contrast way that you could think of it um, is that I'm contrasting a large object with small object. So these are these are all useful things to to keep in mind. These are these are all ways to increase uh, variety and increase interest uh, in your artwork. So like if you've got if you've got a character that's particularly prominent, you know, like in in most furry art, they're going to be taking up most of the of the page or the um, the canvas, whatever space that they're on, because they're supposed to be the dominant element. They are supposed to be the focus of the piece, right? Uh, and every bit, every small bit that's like uh, on the side, you know, can uh, things can make a character more interesting if you add more details and more like. more shapes and whatnot. So yeah, this uh, this is um this is a good example of like we've got we've got we've got dominance dominance or emphasis on one big old side of the page and maybe not necessarily divided like that contrast and we've provided like by by making if we if we dominate our piece with something then our smaller pieces will provide uh, contrast and perhaps a uh, focus points. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. If we're talking about uh, uni, v unity, variety, and harmony, well, so I've got, uh, I've got it, it when when everything is of a single color scheme you can say that that's unified so this is all immediately black and white and it's unified uh, and maybe if I throw something like out of the blue in there that's like a I've got a red element well then suddenly I've got uh, I've pulled focus from these black points to the one that has color right and they and again this um just the, the, the color schemes that you can choose uh, can uh, can influence emphasis. Like, for example, like black, white, and red are all very um, kind of powerful colors. Uh, you'll find them in a lot of, like, um, old-style uh, uh, propaganda pieces, you know, or advertisements for um, military or something like that. 
those can be the several examples of this like uh, black and white and red can be found uh, in those so yeah if we're talking about you know balance or imbalance or symmetry or asymmetry when referring back to a piece like this he making everything messy here if I've got like one side I've got I'm sorry I'm gesturing so if I've got one big side dominated right and I've got one little side the balance of the image is heavily shifted to like this side right especially if it's taken up most of the side and then like over here it's kind of like it's it's imbalanced because there's not a whole lot of black weighing down this side of the canvas than there is over here if I'm thinking about uh, symmetry and asymmetry well we've got some some aspects of that going on here don't we if we've got we've got a symmetry itself of of this square so to speak we could divide it right down the center and one side is very similar to the other side if not perfectly similar um, this this right over here considering just the square that's balanced and then we've got another perhaps line of symmetry that could be cut through the whole piece right here right where the top half matches flips and matches the the bottom half uh, at least somewhat this side is is going to be a bit broken but like if we're talking about uh, we can talk about compositional elements where like the the piece is highly symmetrical um, not maybe not perfectly symmetrical um, which is which is also good that can be another point of uh, contrast and and pulling focus they're all different ways to to think about how a piece is laid out yeah I mentioned contrast before movement and rhythm um, those are mainly going to be uh, for if you've got if you've got things like in a uh, returning to the word pattern we can establish kind of a a rhythm right let's go one two three four these are these elements that can kind of like hold a person's uh, attention for a while maybe they can be guided to these individual spots and maybe they've got uh, other elements in them that make them a bit more interesting or whatnot you know um, and and movement and rhythm can also be uh, seen if I'm uh, if I'm using lines for instance I can create a movement using lines outward from this point maybe so I can create kind of like a a sense of motion maybe towards something you know if we're uh, if this is the the, the uh, if we're out in space we're hurtling towards a planet you know or a, or a ball is coming at you in in a swift style something like that uh, that can be said to convey movement or motion uh, and that is conveyed by the lines right and lines are in a pattern and this is all you know th these are all different ways that we can that we can think about uh, a piece right yeah so if we've got uh, local tones if I'm using slightly different grays now I'm introducing more and more kind of complexity into this work right yet more uh, principles yet more elements I can work into my design composition or whatever uh, any questions so far this is all kind of like 
this is all kind of up in the air, highfalutin kind of stuff. Like, so if anyone's got any questions, definitely let me know. But yeah, so that uh, so that covers uh, design uh, elements and principles rather well. <sighs> Excuse me. So that covers uh, design principles and elements uh, pretty well. So now I'd like to go um, to compositional frameworks. Uh, and in here, I'd like to return to ah, my title card here and kind of zoom in on some of these, uh, some of these different things. So. I have uh, a number of rulers that I got um, from, uh, I forget, um, I think his name was, uh, I'm about to sprout, spout a name that is, is not a good name because I'm mistaking it for some. Oh, his name is uh, Doug Hills, I think. His name is Doug Hills, uh, and he taught, um, he did um, a YouTube series on uh, Manga Studio, Clip Studio Paint now. Uh, and he gave out these rulers, which are really nifty to have. I think his store is still up, and you can still get the stuff, get these things. But there are uh, a number of guides and rulers. So this right here... Why is it not... Okay. Yeah. So, um, compositional frameworks, like, perhaps you've seen several of these things before, uh, where, uh, we've got, um, cutting a piece into thirds, potentially. Um, this can, this can be called the rule of thirds. This is a golden ruler. Uh, this is, uh, let's see here, this is golden mean, I think, yeah, that's a golden mean, golden spiral, golden ruler, And each of these compositional frameworks is uh, slightly slightly different, but a lot of them are based off of this uh, this uh, golden number, um, which is like the 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 golden ratio. I forget the exact math of this. So like, this is why I call this like kind of frameworks. So these are all rules that you can kind of like learn, um, and they can they can be things to to help kind of keep in mind. But they should never uh, rule what you're doing uh, as uh, as an artist necessarily, right? Because then then you're thinking of things the way everyone else is thinking of things, uh, and that's not necessarily necessarily good. So, like the golden ruler here, um, if if I take this uh, if I take this ruler, so to speak, if I take this and I lay it over the ruler here. We can see that we've got uh, a couple of things that, that line up, and perhaps that's a perhaps that's a little far for you to see. So let me zoom in on that. So what we've got is that a proportion of this page is broken up. I think it's like 2.66 something. Um, so it's not uh, it's not a third. Um, but so the, we've here we've got uh, a golden ratio, uh, which is is cut up in that same ratio each time. So it cuts the entire page right here, and then it uses that same ratio to cut the remainder of what happens again and again and again. And those can be some 
that can be an interesting way of, uh, of dividing up uh, an image composition. But yeah, so that, that same ratio is going to come in. A, while I'm talking about that ratio, I might as well talk about this one. So like this one, it divides it once, and it's a way of dividing it so that... Uh, yeah, so that this piece, so that one piece of the paper is square, and then the rest of it uh, just kind of hangs off there. So it's 2.66 to whatever's left on the paper, uh, and you can you can see that this golden ruler is uh, is coming into uh, this uh, this space right here too. Uh, so like this line is the same as this line right here. No. All right, uh, and so this golden spiral is doing um, doing the same thing as here, except it's repeating this in a in a pattern that goes inward, right? So we've got the the arc of this square right here, plus this one. We've made this one a square. Plus this one. We've made this a square. This one. We've made this a square, and so on and so forth. You know, this uh, this is fractal and can continue into infinity. <laughs> But it's um this the this can be thought of as like the golden spiral can be thought of as like a a, a way to guide uh, a viewer's eye around the canvas, you know, using the line work. And again, it doesn't have to be you know any particular one of these ideas. Um, but you can you can use ideas like like spirals and uh and this. These are these are all ways to divide up a um a work. And and think of it, or uh, compose compose to it. So you like you can you can either break down a picture using these methods, right? Or you can start with something like this, and use it as inspiration to make a piece. So here we've got a golden mean, and this is doing the uh, the same thing uh, uh, vertically. It's making it's making a square using this piece right here. And this piece right here, and the cross points. These can be ways of laying down elements in your in your image. The rule of thirds is a really popular one. You can uh, you can find this is like uh, there there's there are like camera settings. If you actually pull out of um, <sighs> cry out Nelly, keep getting pop ups in the middle of my stuff. All right. Um, yeah, so you can turn on kind of this uh, this this compositional framework uh, on like a, a camera or a video or something, and you can line up elements to uh, come across that across these thirds. And if you've got one or two elements that falls along the line of the thirds, it can be said to fit the rule of thirds, so to speak. And there are a lot of famous paintings that can be uh, kind of broken down this this way. A lot of uh, classic Renaissance paintings, for example, can be looked at because this is not, that's just when they were discovering all of this stuff. So um, it was super novel and clever, right, at their time. Um, and because so much time has passed, it's now kind of a cliche tropes. But yeah, that's what time does to. Uh, Design. That's what uh, that's what time does to, to stuff like this. So there are things that are that are following these rules, and there are things that completely break these rules and still work anyway. Um, but there are ways that you can. Those are ways that you can think about it. So yeah. Well, not, I mean, uh, if you feel like you you have comments, like uh, you can you can either leave them in the in the chat or like uh, you can unmute like. Um, Yeah. But yeah, um so Yeah. <laughs> this one was a little less well prepared, but uh yeah, so the so this one's going to be uh quite a bit shorter. Um if anyone has pieces that they'd like to share, uh we can kind of examine them using these things and perhaps offer a, a little bit of insight as like, well, maybe aligning with um, some of these 
uh, rulers and, and compositional frameworks uh, might make your piece better. Keeps telling me I got new messages, but I'm scrolled down to the bottom. But yeah, um, I did not have as much, uh, I did not have as much to say about this as I thought I did. So in the future, I will be a little bit better prepared for it. Um, but yeah, so that wraps up kind of the, the, the composition, um, design principles and elements, uh, presentation that I have. Uh, so I'll go ahead and wrap up the YouTube video, but everyone can um, can stick around for, for longer in the chat, especially if you have questions or comments or things that you'd like to share. Uh, this, uh, this, is kind of a, this is kind of a short one, so this is kind of an experiment to see if this one will work a little bit better than my previous ones have, uh, pr potentially on YouTube and, and so forth. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. I will we'll end the recording. The rest of you I will continue to see in the stream. Bye, YouTube.